I actively avoid these sorts of games, especially by King, who are not exactly known for their relaxed monetization. If anything, they're the perpetrator of such schemes on the mobile market, but they gave Crash on the Run a chance out of curiosity. The endless running game genre works a treat for the style of game Crash is, and when it comes to the gameplay, I wasn't disappointed. When the game lets you play it, it's more fun than I'd give most King games credit for. The battle run levels are surprisingly well thought out, albeit a bit easier than the one I'm going to assume most Crash denizens are used to. I've only played the insane trilogy, so you can call me a scrub or uninformed as much as you like. It works for me. Before you can take on a boss, you have to take on their minions four of them. They all require weapons to be dealt with, and the higher level bosses require more time to make said weapons and ingredients. The minions can feel repetitive to take down, but I think the level design, which are usually different per minion and boss, clinches it and keeps my interest. The bosses do get tougher to complete, and their projectiles hard to avoid, which I think is a good thing. Fake Crash is when it gets to this point, killing me because of the projectile curves being harder to calculate on the fly than of what I was previously used to. It didn't take long to adjust to this, so he was back in his dimension in less than 10 minutes, but overall it was, dare I say it, little pockets of fun when I was allowed to play it. When the game allowed me to play it. As with the depressing amounts of mobile games, COTR runs on a load of in-game crafting timers for the weapons, which you have to use in the battle runs mentioned right at the end to send them packing. And I'm not exaggerating, I really mean lots and lots and lots of timers. The game series well known for requiring quick thinking gets bogged down by forcing you to wait. It's primarily known colloquially in the gaming space of mobile games as a free to wait game, and while you can circumvent this with premium currency, a bloody course you can, purple crystals in this case, as well as downplaying the amount of time you have to wait by unlocking more slots in the crafting machine, so two potions, eggs and weapons at once instead of one at a time, this can only alleviate so much frustration with the system. It's baked in to be annoying, and to unlock more slots and to get more ingredients to make weapons, you need to go on collection runs. Lots and lots and lots of collection runs. Can you start to see the pan yet? The game forces me into a cycle of doing menial ingredient collecting to upgrade coops and machines, and to get more gadgets and gear and potions to defeat enemies and to unlock upgrade slots. The timers are so ingrained in how the game works that I'm just sick and tired of needing to do collection runs. The only saving grace of these collection runs is, is that the level layout, the crates, the traps, the switches, hazards, all that jazz, never changes places or timing, and that means these levels are learnable, which if anything, makes it feel more like a repetitive slog so I can play the game, and less like flexing an exciting piece of knowledge to know what's up the track. Hmm. And if you're the kind of person King is hoping to piss off enough with mind-numbing quests and timers, you can of course submit to premium purchases so you can play the game faster, which if you haven't cottoned onto yet, is King's whole deal. Arbitrary resource management and timers to slow people down, to stop them having any kind of fun in any reasonable amount of time. Without spending money on crystals, you either have to choose between fun gameplay in short bursts with loads of day-to-day -day grinding, or upgrading the slots by grinding collection runs for about 20-45 to 45 minutes so you can be in the best position to have fun on terms that you want, and even that has timers. Collection runs have limited resources. It's also basically impossible to do any more than three minions at a time because the game actively forces you to slow down with increasingly lengthy weapon crafting timers to take on the minions. Some of the machines need to be upgraded for newer equipment, which forces even more collection runs onto you so you can progress. All this means is that you can almost never have enough ingredients or weapons to beat the minions and the boss in one session. How do I know all this? Aside from playing the game, I timed it. I recorded everything. I got to four minions in a row, and then I had to wait several hours to take on the boss. In this case, Ice Nitro Brio. Yes, I'm sticking with that name. And do you know how long it took? To go through all four minions and the boss? 14 minutes and 27 seconds. I think I need to repeat this again. 14 minutes and 27 seconds. For several hours of waiting, grinding runs to get ingredients and equipment, and straight up selling ingredients because the game has a limit on the silo and subsequently upgrading the silo too because of course it has a sodding limit on the ingredients, I think this is what the cool kids call a bad deal. But I'm gonna call it what it is. A game that tries my patience. <sighs> Moving on. And while watching ads can double collect ingredients after a run, this does not apply to the more technical parts required to upgrade slots. Because, of course it doesn't. 
Skins can either be gone through the Bandicoot Pass, because of course this game has a rewards pass, which lets you get ingredients and stuff to help you get into the game faster. I'll be fair, it is a consistent reward for those that like that sort of challenge, and you do get some admittedly nice skins and a fair chunk of crystal coinage if you play enough of the game this way. I don't, because the time has put me off, in case you couldn't tell. I don't know how long I have on this game, but I'm pretty sure it's less than a few hours if, without waiting around. They've also done the classic free-to-play mobile trick of locking skins with themes related to one another to a paid and free track separately. The second way, of course, is by going through the store, which lets you buy skins with direct purchase, you can buy purple crystals with a very weird subscription model, and just, in general, buy ingredients and items. You do get some stuff for free as well, I should probably say. Uh, if you watch ads, you can get a uh, free thing. Sometimes it's crystal, sometimes it's an ingredient. Normally this refreshes every few hours, or every game opening, as I've noticed. I'm not questioning it, that's a little bit of an interesting loophole there. I haven't played the survival runs yet, nor have I really touched the group feature, and I don't plan on it, so I cannot comment on that part of the game. Hell, maybe that mode redeems the game for you, but I'm not going to find out. Similar to TF2's Man vs Machine, you require a ticket to play, but you do get a free ticket every day, so spending money is only required if you want to play on repeat playthroughs, or, you know, continue to have fun. King.com, we monetize fun. Some of the character skins also have added benefits, like ingredient collection boosts, you can start with Aku Aku, there's a lot of bonuses. I did a few gem runs too, and while I did find these to, again, to actually be a fun little time, unlike the collection runs, I actually do feel happy with the way the levels challenge me, because I'm not forced to do them constantly. The gem runs often have to make you think laterally, ignoring muscle memory, and do a bit of puzzle solving, and complete the objective, depending on what it is. Oftentimes it's just get to the end, some of the other times it's to defeat certain enemies like spiders or whatever. But I'm under no illusion when I say that it essentially exists to coast in completionists and challenge those waiting on godforsaken timers to keep you in the app for longer. A combination of metric boosting and just trying to uh, make you have more fun, I guess. Same goes for the time trials. If I had to summarise this game, it would be like this. This game has potential, a lot of it in fact, but for what amounts to less than 14 minutes of genuinely fun gameplay has been squandered by King's obsession with milking their audience as the game is overrun by an ever increasing number of freemium timers that one has to keep track of ways to beat the grind and frankly it's just tiring to play. Tiring away to have fun is no fun at all. Games are meant to be an escape from reality, not a way for me to feel more depressed and annoyed at reality like I already am. Also, Coco is really peppy and fun here, if you're wondering why I play Coco a lot with the footage, then now you know. <sighs> it's all uphill from here.